Hey everyone, Lyric here, and I am a late discovered autistic adult. And like many other neurodivergent people, I experience bullying as a young person, sometimes even as an adult. If you are autistic or neurodivergent in some way and have experienced bullying, bullying, unfortunately, you're likely not alone in this because many of us experience bullying. And there are lots of different types of bullying you can experience. If you're wondering about some of those types of bullying I personally experienced as an undiagnosed autistic person, please stay tuned. First, I want to talk about something that happened regularly. To a lot of people, it might have seemed innocent or if people were just trying to be helpful, but that is having people constantly pick at me and try to encourage me by saying things like, if you would just apply yourself or you only would try harder, not knowing I was autistic and neurodivergent and was already trying my hardest, trying much harder than other people to do certain things. As an autistic person, there are always going to be things that are harder for me than they are for non-autistic people because autistic people and non-autistic people have different strengths and weaknesses because our brains are different. Constantly being asked to try harder when I was already trying my hardest taught me to ignore my own limits and also taught me that nothing I would ever do would be good enough to people around me and that I needed to try extra hard to prove myself, none of which was actually true, all of which had extremely negative impacts on my mental health. Then there were the comments from my peers and other young people when I was growing up, when I would move a certain way or talk about a subject that other children did not have interest with. I would be called weird or twitchy or the R word or other things by the kids. Other kids, especially little girls, were some of the meanest people I dealt with as a young person. And even teachers often were not helpful. For example, once I went to one of my teachers and told them that I was being bullied and picked on, and the teacher's response was, if you would just act normal, the other kids would leave you alone. The other thing I really struggled with with teachers was often in school, teachers had expectations that I would sit very still and look at them when they were talking to me while they were lecturing and not do anything else while they were teaching. Being autistic and ADHD means, for one, when I am taking in new information or trying to recall information from my own brain, I am often looking away because I am visualizing since I am a visual processor. I see pictures in my head when people are talking, so the words paint pictures for me. If I am looking at someone's face, I am unable to paint mental pictures to process and understand what's being said to me. In school, this caused a lot of problems. The other thing is being ADHD means when something does not catch my interest or give enough dopamine to my brain, my brain gets bored and will do other things. Often that is fall asleep. In school, I would draw or doodle while a teacher was lecturing, for example, and that because I was doing something else while the teacher was lecturing, even though I was paying attention, or because I wasn't looking directly at the teacher while the teacher was teaching, was often taken as me being disrespectful. I was constantly scolded and punished because my attention didn't look like the attention of neurotypical kids around me. I moved around a lot. I struggled to stay in my seat. I was constantly busy and always moving or talking to myself or singing to myself because I had a lot of excess energy in me, energy I needed to get out. Teachers often responded by taking away my recess, which was my break time to go and run and get all of that energy out of me. 
it was quite counterproductive and meant to teach me some lesson, but all it did was make it harder for me to learn. In school, teachers didn't appreciate all of my extra energy. My energy is in relation to my intense experience of the world. Sometimes that is intense joy, intense excitement, intense frustration, being happy. I'm really, really happy. I'm so happy that the happiness bubbles out of my body and I may jump up and down and I may make noises and make a big deal out of something that other people might find small, which did get me in trouble in school, also got me mocked and picked on by my peers. This started as a young person and continued as an adult. People constantly telling me to stop being dramatic or being overly excited about things or to grow up. All of the types of bullying I've mentioned so far were small. Those little small things, like a million little tiny pinpricks, did add up over my life. But there were other ways in which I was bullied by other people that were even more hurtful and traumatic. For example, when I was a young person, my instinct was to take people for what they said. It never occurred to me that people would lie or manipulate or that people would be nice to me because they had ulterior motives or wanted something from me. When I was a young autistic person, I thought anyone who was nice to me must be my friend. And found out, unfortunately, the hard way, multiple times, that this was not true. Some of the meanest and cruelest things that were done to me as a young person by other young people were people tricking me into doing things because I thought they were my friends. But really, they were trying to trick me into doing things that would get me in trouble or that would amuse them. When I was very young, I didn't understand yet that people would sometimes act like your friends to get you into trouble. The last type of bullying that I'm going to talk about today is reactive bullying. And this one, they got me with a lot of times, especially in school. What the other kids would do to me was pick on me when the teacher wasn't looking and they would constantly pick at me, pick at me, pick at me, pick at me. Maybe it was throwing spitballs at me or poking me in the back or just doing some constant little thing every time the teacher wasn't looking until I couldn't take it anymore. Eventually, I would get boiling mad like a volcano and the pressure would build up and I would turn around and scream at them or have a reaction. When this happened, I would be the one who would get in trouble, not the other kid who was constantly throwing things at me or smacking me or poking me or taking my things when the teacher wasn't looking. That's all I have to share today. If you're a neurodivergent person and you experience bullying growing up or even as an adult, I invite you to share what that was like for you and the impact that that had on your life. Thank you everyone who stuck around until the end. This is the end of the video. If you're still here, hit that thumbs up. Let me know I didn't lose you on the way to this point. Thanks everyone who comments, who sticks around, who catches these videos. I put out new videos each and every Wednesday. Thank you for everyone who subscribes, shares your video feedback, and questions and suggestions. Thanks to those monetary subscription members that help me with things like website hosting, transcriptioning software, the technology with which this blog is filmed on. None of this would be possible without the help and support of readers like you. So I am incredibly grateful for each and every one of you. Thank you so much. I will see you all next week. Bye.